Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to look at our fourth and last point of concurrency when we're dealing with triangles. So today we're going to look at and define the centroid. We're going to see how that centroid works into what we call the center of gravity for a triangle. So now review from last lesson. Okay, if we take the angle bisectors of a triangle and create the in center, which is equal distance from the triangle's sides and is the center of the inside circle that we can create. Okay, perpendicular bisectors of a triangle create the circumcenter which is equal distant from the triangle's vertices or corner points and it is the center of the out side circle. So if we think about an inside circle which is contained inside the triangle, that's the in center. If we're thinking about an outside circle that contains all of the vertice points, that is our circumcenter. And the altitudes of the triangle create the concurrent point called the ortho center. And that is the one point that is perpendicular to all three sides. Okay, today when we talk about the medians of the triangle, so it goes from a vertice to the middle of the opposite side. Okay, this is called the centroid. I want to make sure I get the spelling right here. Okay, so the centroid of a triangle is the point of concurrence where is the overlap or the intersecting value of all of the medians. So we find the middle of the opposite side, connect it with the vertex to create the centroid. So now we have our centroid conjecture because the centroid can help us find some interior lengths and distances inside the triangle. Okay, the centroid of the triangle divides each median, so each one of the lengths, into two parts so that the distance from the centroid to the vertex, okay, this upper length, is twice the distance from the centroid to the middle of the opposite side. Okay, so it's a two-thirds, one-third relationship overall. So if I know that the distance at the bottom is 10, okay, that is one-third of the overall distance. And I'm going to show this in a couple ways because there are a couple different ways to do this. But if the 10 is equal to one-third of the overall distance, Okay, we need an x on the bottom because the 10 is the portion of it, which is 1 out of 3. We can cross multiply and solve, and we get the full length of the median is 30. And then we can just subtract if we want to find that distance x. So in this case, just to keep things separate, okay, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to find the full median. So I'm going to give this a new name, z. So z equals 30 and the 30 is equal to x plus 10, where the x equals 20. Okay, what you can always remember though is if you have the short length, you can always multiply by 2 to get the long length. Okay, you have to do a little bit more work if you're working backwards. But the one thing I like to do is always find the length of the overall median 
because then what we're doing is we're using ratios, which we've used almost the entire semester, and we're just being able to continue that work. Okay, so now, if we know that BC is 16 inches, okay, we want to be able to find AC and then the full length AB. Okay, so once again, what I like to do is using what I'm given, BC is 16, okay, that is equal to the two-thirds portion of the AB line. Okay, so I always like to work to the full distance first and know that that full distance is just broken up into the two pieces. And we already know one of the pieces with the 16. Okay, so if we cross multiply, 2 times AB equals 16 times 3, okay, which is 48. So 2 times AB equals 48. Divide both sides by 2, and we get AB equals 24. Okay, now once we have AB, we've got the full distance. We know that AB, 24, equals BC plus AC. And then we can just work to solve from there. Subtract 16 from both sides and we get AC equals 8, and then we can always check to make sure that AC and BC add up to equal AB, and in this case, they do. Okay, now, another example. Ooh, excuse me. I don't know what happened with the mic. Another example we have here is we're given the AC measurement, so now we're given the one-third length, and we want to set up that proportion. Okay, so AC, which is 3, equals one-third of this distance. And then what I need to know is what is that total distance called, and we call it AB. And now I've got my equal proportions, and I can cross-multiply and solve. AB equals 9. So now I have the full distance I have part of the distance, and then I can use that to find BC, okay, which 9 minus 3 equals 6. Okay, now, there's a number of ways you can go about this process. Okay, you can think about it in terms of multipliers, because as soon as I have AC, I can times by 2 to get BC, and then I can add them both together to get AB. Okay, now, if I'm working backwards, okay, another thing that we can do to get the AC length here is understand that 16 is the doubled length. It's the two-thirds of the one-third. So if I want to go right from BC to AC, I can divide by 2, and then I can use addition to get that length measurement. Okay, we'll do one more here. So we have AB is the full length, 12, and I need to break it into whatever piece I want. Okay, so I can take that 12, okay, and what we have to remember, and I almost made the mistake here, that 12 is the full distance so it goes on bottom with the 3. And if I want to find AC, I'm trying to find the one-third that is equivalent to something out of 12. And so I would put the AC on top. Okay, AC is the small measurement over total. 1 is the small measurement over the total of 3 for that comparison ratio. Okay, so once again, it's all ratios when we're looking at this unit overall. So 3 times AC equals 12, divide both sides by 3, and we get AC equals 4. And then we could do the same thing if we want for BC. BC over 12 equals the two-thirds measurement. 
So then we cross multiply from here. 3 times BC equals 24. Divide both sides by 3 and BC equals 8. Okay, so I have that measurement as well. Okay, so there's a number of ways you can go about this. Make sure that you always check to see that you've got the two-thirds, one-third relationship between the long portion and short portions of your medians. Okay, now, the last thing that we want to look at here today is the center of gravity conjecture. Okay, center of gravity would be the balance point. So if we're going to take a triangle and balance it, on a single point, the centroid of the triangle is the center of gravity or the balancing point of the triangular region. Okay, now, one thing that we can do to make our life a little bit easier is look to see, is there a shortcut to finding the centroid? Because you can see, if we want to find the centroid of this triangle, we would have to go through, draw all the medians, find where the medians intersect, okay? And, you know, doing the drawing in the diagram to get the point negative 1, negative 2, okay? That takes a lot of work to be able to, to draw all of those median lines and find that point of intersection. So we're going to test this. We already have the picture. We know the answer. Okay, we're going to test this idea. Let's find the mean value of the x-coordinates and the mean value of the y-coordinates. So if I want to find the mean of x, we call it x-bar. Okay, when we find the mean or find an average, negative 5 plus 3 plus negative 1, we're going to divide all of that by 2, and what do we get when we do that work? We get a negative 1. Okay, so we've got 6. Okay, so we've gone through, we've found that value. Okay, so negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Oh, just double checking work here. Negative 5, 3, negative 1. Let's add that up. I don't know why I'm second guessing myself here, but uh, oh, now I know. This is the problem with doing those videos too early in the morning about 615 right now. Got to divide it by 3 and we get our nice even average there. Okay, now we find our y bar values. Okay, so we're going to find the average of the y's negative 3 plus negative 5 plus 2 divided by 3 and what do we get? We get negative 2 for an answer. So if we need to find the centroid or the center of gravity for a triangle, what we can do is once we have our three vertice points, we can find the average of the x's, okay, and the average is a balancing point. <coughs> Excuse me. Find the average of the y's, and that is the balancing point of the triangle. And that ends our lesson today, dealing with the centroid and center of gravity. Thank you, and have a good day.